Consider the trust shown if the loads acting on the joint are high in magnitude. There is a chance of permanent deformation of the members, hence causing failure of the truss. In order to prevent such a scenario, we need to find all the member forces of the truss. This process is called as analysis of trusses. The complete analysis of a truss primarily involves two steps, calculation of the support reactions and then finding the actual forces in all the members of the truss. The nature of actual forces, that is tensile or compressive, is also to be found. Before we study the methods used for analysis of trusses, we should first learn the assumptions on which the analysis would be based. All the members of the truss lie in a single plane, thus together forming a planar truss. All the loads acting on the truss lie in the plane of the truss. The members of the truss are joined at the ends by internal hinges known as pins. Loads act only at the joints and not directly on the members. All the members of the truss are two force bodies and therefore resulting in actual forces which are tensile or compressive in nature. As the self weight of the members is very small in comparison to the loads, the self weight of the members is neglected. The truss is statically determinate, that is, all the forces can be determined using the conditions of equilibrium. There are two methods primarily used for analyzing truss analytically, method of joints and method of sections. In this video, we will learn the method of joints to analyze trusses. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Method of joints. As the name suggests, in this method, we will isolate the joints from the parent truss and then apply conditions of equilibrium to the individual joints. The principle if the truss is in equilibrium, an isolated joint of the truss will also be in equilibrium is used in this method. The following steps are followed while analyzing a truss using method of joints. Step 1. We will first apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire truss to calculate reactions at all the supports. Step 2. Select a joint from the truss which only has two members with unknown forces. Isolate the selected joint from the truss and draw its free body diagram. We select joints with only two unknown members as only two conditions of the equilibrium can be applied to analyze a joint. Step 3. Assume that the members carry only tensile forces. Based on this assumption, show the arrows on the unknown member forces pointing away from the joint. Step 4. The forces at the joint form a concurrent force system to which we can only apply two conditions of equilibrium. Sum of all forces in x direction is zero sum of all forces in y direction is zero. By using the above conditions, we will find the unknown member forces at the joint. If any value calculated is found to be negative, it implies that the assumption was incorrect and that the particular member carries compressive force and not tensile force. Step 5. Mark the magnitude and nature of the forces calculated on the parent truss. Then, select and isolate another joint having only two members with unknown forces. Kindly note that we will repeat steps 2 to 5 solving joint after joint in this process in order to find forces in all members of the truss. Step 6. Present the results in a tabular form indicating the member, the magnitude of the force acting on it and the nature of the force.